In terms of core technique with the right hand, there are a couple things that you need to pay attention to. One is that John's hand is addressing the guitar, unlike the hand of a classical or folk guitarist. And instead of coming in and playing with the tip of his thumb, with this part of the thumb, John's playing with the side of his thumb. And his thumb is extended the way your thumb would be extended when you shake hands with somebody. It's part of the alignment. It's lined up with his radius and with his, his long, the long bones of his arm. And he's playing with the side of it. And that brings your palm very close to the guitar in the same way when you go to shake hands, the side of your thumb and your palm are lined up together. You could put your hand on a table and see what that's like where you've got one plane. And you're bringing that to the string plane. And in order to open the bass strings, all you do is just rotate your forearm a little bit like this, and the bass notes will ring. And as you rotate down with your palm a little bit more supine, a little up, it brings this part of your palm into contact with the bass strings. Um, if you try and mute with this part of your palm, at the base of your thumb, you'll cripple your playing. Um, but here, when, just by rotating your forearm a tiny bit, you can bring this part of your, of your palm into contact with the bass strings. Now, if you play guitar like this and you do that, you're going to kill the high strings. But if your guitar is aligned this way with a little bit of an angle to the neck, or if you're coming in at an angle like this with your arm, which I don't recommend your shoulder being up that high, but that's up to you. Um, basically, you want only to, to mute the bass strings with that part of your palm and leave the high strings free to ring. So even without touching the guitar in standard tuning, I can get this. So the high strings ring and the bass strings are muted. This is like having two instruments in my hands. I have a tightly muted bass instrument and I have high strings that will ring and play the melody for me. Um, and it's a beautiful way of sort of dividing the guitar into two different sounds. And it's simply done by having the strings at a little bit of an angle and rotating your forearm a little bit to bring your palm not parallel to the string plane, but at a little bit of an angle. And that, that will shut those down. Now, you'll also notice when you hear John play that He's pushing the backbeat a little bit. Uh, the backbeat are the, the second and fourth beat of a measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And he does that not by snapping the guitar string like that, but by brushing into the next string above it. So we have this single bass note and then a little brush. Like that. And I'm playing six and four here. It's just this little push. Um, you can snap the string now and then, um, but it gets annoying quickly. So it's, it's an effect to be used when you want it, not a habit to get into. So in order to get that backbeat push, you want to just brush a little bit with your thumb on the inside strings in terms of alternating bass. And you'll, you'll hear that note on the, on the two and four. One, two, three, four. Just a little push, a little extra oomph to it. And it gives it that great sort of syncopation and swing that we like. One, two, three. Same thing with the F. Now the other thing that you'll notice me doing is I'm relaxing the bass side of the chord just by like squeezing it like a sponge and then releasing a little bit. So we get So I'm, I'm double muting a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm muting with the palm of my hand here. And I'm relaxing my grip up there. C, G. And here I'll just flatten down my redneck salute finger and stop the inside strings that are open. Having established a little bit of right hand technique, we can start to develop a vocabulary in the right hand. 
you're going to ask your hand to do a variety of different things. It's not infinite. It's a convenient lie, but it's a very convenient lie to say that in ragtime music, essentially, you're either going to play melody notes on the beat or on the back beat, off the beat. So you have one, two, three, four would be our four beats in a measure. And then we have one and two and three and four and. And we're basically going to fill in those possibilities in any given measure without dropping a bass note. And your thumb is going to play the numbered notes. One, two, three, four. The quarter notes in this case. And your finger is either going to play with it, play quarter notes with it on the beat, or it's going to alternate with it and play backbeat notes. So we have this, one, two, three, four, one, where everything's on the beat, and we're pinching to play an on the beat note because your thumb's going to play every beat. So it's I'm playing uh, the first and second string with my with my fingers, and my thumb is playing five and four here. So I'm playing five and four. We're not going to worry about double alternating the bass right now. And then we're going to pinch on the one. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Same thing in F. One, two, three, G. Now we try and do that and move the pinch, the melody notes, to the second beat. So it would be one, two, three, four. And then we try and move to the third beat. This one's hard for me because John almost never did it. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, I missed one. And then the last one is the pinch on four, which would be one, two, three, four. So those are our pinches, and they're right on the beat, and you can move them around as you need to. Now when I organize my hand on the guitar, um, my thumb is going to stay to the bass side of the guitar. It'll play the third string uh, generally in this style, but, but nothing above it. And my, my two fingers, my two strongest fingers in my hand, my redneck salute finger and my index finger, are going to play the high strings, and they, they work as a unit. They move from one pair of strings to another so that they work together. Now, if I move them to the inside strings, they move together. So my index finger is always going to play the string that's in space above um, the other one because it's a little shorter. So I have one muscle pattern where I can sort of flutter kick on the two high strings or on the second and third string while my thumb is playing on the sixth, fourth, or fifth string. So we wind up with things uh, like this. fingers just sort of flutter kicking on the high strings and my thumb is playing the proper bass notes so it's pinch and pinch and pinch and pinch it's a little bit like skipping and so I have pinches on the beat and I'm moving the bass note from five to four. And then I'm going to add an index finger note between each pinch. So you get this. Now, if, as if that wasn't enough, then we can double alternate the bass. So it would be this. turned our index finger and our rending salute finger loose on the high strings to just keep alternating. When the high part gets really complicated, you simplify the bass part, but you don't give up those thumb notes. If 
for some reason your thumb doesn't play a quarter note in one of John Hurt's tunes, I want to see a note from your doctor. I mean, I, I want to know why that note didn't come to work today. Concentrating on this, this nice muted thumb sound, and then adding whatever you can to it without dropping a bass note is the key to learning this style. So you could play a backbeat note. That's one, two, and one, two, and three, four, 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 one, two, and three. Or you can pinch right on the beat on the one, one, two, We start to mix these up. On the Cattail Music website, you'll find a, a series of drills for the tune Payday. And the reason I started there in terms of right hand technique was to simplify and take the left hand sort of out of the picture. So if you put your guitar in open detuning, then you can take a look at the tab and see how in two measure drills you can develop the, a lot of the vocabulary you need you're going to ask your hand to do as you go through and learn Mississippi John Hurt's guitar parts. So the first drill in the payday two measure drills that are on the website in tablature um, you'll see the bass play the thumb part first six and four And drill number one is just a pinch on the first beat of each measure on the first string. So it's six and one. Then your thumb alternates. Six and one, two, three, four, six and one. And then the pinches wind up on two and four. One, two, three. And then the third two measure drill is simply alternating. And here I'm, I'm alternating by sort of flutter kicking on the high strings. So I start with six and two, four and one, six and two, four and one. Now you could do this just with one finger by moving where your finger is. But in order to play John Hurt's figures and his arrangements, you're going to want to learn to use different fingers for different strings here. And I, again, I use these two fingers, the strongest fingers in my hand to do this. Assigning my index finger to either the second string or the third string and, and, and moving the pair up, these pair of fingers up. second and first or third and second with the thumb just pounding away at six and four and then you can pinch on the first beat and then flutter kick through so you do this now there's two ways to think about this one is this is going on The other is this is going on. And when you put them together, you wind up with pinches and a note in between. So it's right on the beat. And then an index finger note on the second string in between. sort of filled in all the eighth notes. Now we can add interest and syncopation into this picture by putting a pinch on two, one, two, and then alternating for the last two beats. 
So I have one by itself, two, pinch, then three and four and. and this is where developing this as a two measure drill or a half an hour for your hand to get used to it allows you to then use it for two beats of a measure rather than all four. And we're gradually going to develop again a vocabulary for your right hand where it can do pretty much anything you ask it to do without dropping what's going on in the bass part. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now, when we take the pitch out of John Hurt's music, uh, if we took a, a, a standard guitar part that he played and we remove the notes from it and just leave the rhythms by themselves, you wind up with things that sound like African drumming. You wind up with, there's our steady beat. What we're essentially asking you to do is to develop an African drum section in your right hand. And it's tricky and it takes time. So the proper thing to do is to simplify the high part and make sure your thumb is playing every beat. We tend to fall in love with the melodic figures in music. We love melody. But the groove is what defines this music and your thumb is it. So if you have to sacrifice something, you sacrifice the high notes and simplify that and hold on to the steady bass. And if you make a mistake with your thumb, or if, if you make a mistake in the high part, keep your thumb moving. Don't stop. Concentrate on the thumb first, and just go around again until you can do the key thing you're hoping to do. So if you're playing six and four, or six and five, six, four, and five, four, Decide what you're going to do. Uh, if you pinch on one, two, three, pinch on one, one. Pinch on two. Pinch on three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Pinch on four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just work that out so that at each one becomes sort of normalized for you. And then add a little bit of alternating to get one and two and three and four and one and two and three. This is sort of like Travis picking. And then we're going to add pinches in there to get emphasis on the beat. So it could be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. This is how this vocabulary is built up in your right hand. Pay attention to what the thumb is doing first and foremost until that feels normal. And then add one thing from the top part of the, of the staff, from the treble notes, and keep your thumb going. And then add two and gradually build up a vocabulary. You want to try and keep the song whole as you're learning it rather than uh, just sitting there and reading tab and trying to memorize the whole thing and all the complexities of it. If you were a young kid sitting around a circle of older players um, before tablature became commonly available, you'd be trying to get the right chord. You'd be trying to get the right rhythm with your thumb. And the last thing you'd do is try and get all those little tittles and jots that happen in the high part. You'd leave that alone and simplify it. And what this does is allow you to keep the song whole, play the song, in a simplified version, holding on to the key thing, which in John Hurt's music and in blues generally is the groove. It's this. And if you can fall in love with that, you will eventually learn John Hurt's music.